this is just going to be a very basic tutorial on how to build your own computer. Um, very generalized. I'm not going to go into depth on how to do every single little thing. But uh, I just thought I would do this because I'm doing a computer rebuild myself. I'm moving up to an NVIDIA N4 680i SLI motherboard. This just came in the mail today and it's amazing. I haven't used it yet, but I've, I've heard great things about it. Great overclocking potential. Still running on my uh, E6300. 2 gigs of RAM, which is what I used to have. Um, I'm upgrading to an 8800 GTS, but I don't have it yet, so I'm using my 7600 GT for now. And a water cooling system. Now, I've already got my water block connected to my um, hoses and the quick disconnects and everything, because I've been running it through my system, just uh, without it actually being connected to anything to cool, but make sure there's no leaks or anything. And I'm also upgrading to a Cooler Master Stacker 830 case. I mean, this case is gigantic. It just towers my other one over here, my old one, and some ball scans. They're amazing. But, uh, yeah, so that's it. Um, I guess I should probably get started now, but yeah. Basic parts to get started, you're going to need, of course, a motherboard um, processor. Uh, I would recommend Core 2 Duo. That's the best right now. You can get a 4300 for like 180 and by the April price drop it'll be down to 150 Um, You're going to need some RAM, a graphics card, and a case, power supply, which is already installed up there, and um, so of course a DVD drive. That's about just your most basic components. And of course, you know, cooling for everything. Um, now, the optional things you can get are, of course, a different cooler, like a Zalman air cooler or a water cooling system, TV tuners, um, more CD dri drives, uh, floppy drives, MIDI card readers, you know, things like that. Fans or, you know, just optional stuff like that. Um, of course, you can also have two graphic cards if you have an SLI setup. And that's about all. The first thing you're going to want to do is install all of your uh, bay. I don't know exactly what to call them. Anything that goes in these 5.5 drive bays or 3.5, like a floppy drive. Um, most new cases today have a toolless installation where you can slide something back and forth like this and it'll lock into place. Or... Um, that where well, you can move it around and just twist a little lock, like my old case was, and the lock into place. All right, see so here I've got my two bay water cooling system, DVD drive, media reader with external SATA ports, and a floppy drive. And then down here, um, this has a um, internal 120 fan, 120 millimeter fan intaking air. Once you've got all of these things installed, just put into your case. You don't need to actually connect anything yet go ahead and take your hard drives and screw them into your hard drive bay. Now, um, some have toolless, some don't. This one, the stacker does not have a toolless installation. You actually have to screw stuff in. And once you have that in, then just go ahead and put in your power supply. This was easy. It's just, you place it in the back and then screw four screws in. And then, I've got all my wires that I need here. My uh, main motherboard connector, Molex connectors, um, SATA power connectors, and that's about it. Also, my uh, four pin uh, motherboard connector, which is now on the 680i, you have to use this one, which is an eight pin. And just go ahead and let them dangle. Uh, you can clean up your wiring later. You're also going to have some case wires like your uh, power, power resets, which is not, not that's not what they are. Right here, your power reset, um, power LED, and hard drive LED. And these will just go straight into your motherboard. And so just get everything down that for now, and then you can screw it. Okay, I've unpacked my motherboard. Here you can see it is. It's a very nice looking motherboard. Um, black PCB, um, three PCI Express slots, so you can have actually three graphics cards, I believe. Or you can have um, two graphics cards, an SLI, and a physics card, a PPU. Um, uh, the packaging was just excellent, better than anything I've ever seen in any type of motherboard. You also get your RAID disk, drivers and utilities, a little quick install guide, an all-out motherboard, um, 
SLI bridge. Looks like some USB serial and firewire port extenders, uh, backplate, chipset cooling, and uh, ATA cables and SATA cables. And um, that's about it for this. The this manual looks very nice. It's uh, quite thick, bigger than the other manual I've had for motherboard. Um, this motherboard, in case you don't know, is pretty much one of the ultimate motherboards. Uh, let's see, you see in the back here we got dual gigabit LAM, four USB ports, regular audio, optical audio, two S two USB ports, one thirteen ninety four, and two PS two ports. Um, that's about it. Looks real nice. Also, it's got a little uh, post indicator, so you can see what's happening during your post. If something goes wrong, the LEDs. Uh, Built-in power and reset switch. This is a great idea. Um, I think that's it. Looks real nice. Also, you got two SATA ports over here on the side, and then four up here. And an extra Molex connector. Um, if you're running SLI, just to get a little bit more power. So next thing I'm we'll going to be doing is uh, screwing it in to the motherboard tray and getting your Whatever case you choose may or may not have a removable motherboard tray. The stacker is a very high-end case, so it of course does. And um, first thing you're going to need to do, whether or not you have a motherboard, uh, unless you, never mind. whether or not you have a little motherboard tray, you just screw in your standoffs, your motherboard standoffs. Um, some, they might already come pre-installed for ATX motherboards. Some might. This one didn't. Just screw them in. Real easy. Match them up to the ones on your motherboard. Now, take your little back plate here. Okay, and you're just going to slip it into sp to this spot. Okay. And then you're just going to set your motherboard down, line it up, and then screw it down. Forgot to mention a very big and important step. And that would be to take your CPU uh, or your really your socket cover off, and then if you have a aftermarket cooler or water cooling set, to go ahead and install your processor, okay, and also your um, water cooling set or your cooler. And so I'm going to show you how to do. That. Go ahead and take any backing off of your uh, processor that you may have, just like that. You can see it. All right. Now what you're going to do is take a two of Arctic Silver 5 and squeeze about that much out into the middle. Just a little bit. I'm going to set that down for a second. Okay. Then put your finger into a plastic bag like this. Like that. And you're going to spread it around. Now, once you've applied your Arctic Solar 5, lift up on your little socket here. Align the arrow on right there. To the arrow right there. And drop it into place. Be careful. Make sure it's seated nicely. There's no anything in the way. Then drop it down. Put a little bit of pressure right there. And just this down, around, and back under. And there you go. Now, take any type of underneath, a you know, little thing for underneath your motherboard, place it down, and place your motherboard on top. Okay. Oh, you can't really see that. There we go. And make sure, like, there you can see the little holes for it. Alright. So, I'm just going to align that real quick. Make sure you get it in there nicely. You don't want any. Um, you won't don't want to mount uh, your water block or your cooler unevenly. That would not be good. No, I'm just kind of leaving the camera on. It's probably not too good. Now, once you got that through, lay your water block on top like that and align the holes. And take whatever type of screw they gave you. Mine's like this sit it in and then screw it down and but do an e but do it evenly because you do not want it to be uneven that will get you some bad temps and um just and now once you've got your motherboard screwed in like this you're just going to take 
any um, cards you have and put them in. Okay, it's really easy. Just line them up, slide them in. There you go. See, I just installed my graphics card. I don't know if you could. I don't know if I really got a good shot at that. And then use either your thumb screws, screws, or whatever came with your case to screw it in. Do that for all of your cards, and then for your RAM, you're just going to take um, your module, open up your RAM slots, like that, line up your notches, put it in, and then, well, make sure it's even and it's in there. Both of your little things are fully back. Okay, and then just push straight down, and they'll lock. I realize that I skipped a ton of steps, um, but I got a little carried away. Everything's working though, and the only thing you're going to do is once you get your RAM and all of your cards installed, and your water block, or your cooler, or whatever else, you're just going to slide your motherboard tray in, and then connect any SATA cables to your hard drives, um, all your power cables. It's really self-explanatory. The only thing that's a little bit of trouble is uh, the USB cables, the firewire cables, and the on-off reset LED kind of those things. Just look in the manual, and I'll tell you exactly where to plug them in. Um, that's about it. I mean, just put the side in your case, load up whatever operating system you're going to install, just put it in the drive, boot up, and it should automatically boot to it. And see, I'm installing Vista right now. Um, Vista is really quick installing up. It's about 15 minutes actual install process and it came with the pre-installed RAID drivers and um... that's pretty cool there it is starting up for the very first time uh... also there's something really cool about this uh... Cool Master stacker case and that's if you have a 10k raptor drive the raptor x that has the window on the top of it there's a spot to put the drive right there you can take out the little uh, fan filter and then put your drive right there. And that's really cool. Alright, there it is. And this is very stock. There's no overclocking at all done to this. Um, let's see something here. I as well look at my score real quick. 5.0. Then once I overclock a little bit and they get some other stuff done, I'll get my 800 GCS. I should be up to around 5.0. 7, 5.8, 5.9, which is the highest, which will be awesome. Um, so I hope this little guide helped you, and I'm just going to go ahead and say that I strongly, strongly recommend um, the 680i motherboard and the Cooler Master case, and of course the Core 2 Duo.